Hi, this is Wendy from Knitters Brewing, and today I want to give you a simple solution to a common issue that knitters have when they're doing small circumference colorwork knitting. And by small circumference, I mean projects such as this sock, or fingers on a glove, or a sleeve of a sweater, any project where you're working in the round and it's a fairly small project like this where you're having usually to use multiple needles. So there's a tendency when you're doing this kind of work for the finished project to end up being less stretchy than it would be if it was a single color project. I myself had a real problem with this for a long time and I found a solution and that's what I want to share with you today so that you can enjoy uh, stretchy socks that are easy to get on and, and look nice also. First, I'd like to chat for a minute uh, about what causes this tightness in small circumference color work knitting. This diagram uh, is a representation of four different techniques that are generally used for small circumference knitting. This would be magic loop where we have one long double pointed needle. Uh, this is the two circular needle method for doing small circumference. And here's four DPNs, that's very uh, common use as well. And then we have the short circular needle. These are about nine inches long uh, that are, are used as well. In each of these cases, we're going to assume that the stitches, and we'll just, I'm just gonna use the sock uh, for an example in all these cases. The sock stitches are on the needle, and then there's a little place where you're going to have some uh, area where the stitching bridges this gap where the needles come together. On Magic Loop, you've got one where the needles are and one where the loop is. On two circs, you've got a little gap here and a little gap here. And then on four uh, DPNs, you've got four gaps, but they're not quite as bad as, as the ones on the two circs because you've got a, a more open um, space between your needles here. You've got a bigger angle, so it's not quite as extreme as it is in these two situations. So for each of these examples, what we're doing is we're looking down into the project. This is a magic loop. I've got a 32 inch circular needle and my stitches, here's the little gaps I'm talking about. Not as bad on the this end, well, pretty much the same. And here's my right side and my inside and this is where my floats are. And the floats are the color that's not being used to knit with at the time. So you've got uh, two blue stitches right here and behind those is the light color that's being carried in the back while those two dark stitches are being made. Those are called the floats. Tightness of floats is what causes you to lose stretchiness in the project. Now, going back to my chart, if you keep that sock example in mind that I just showed, it's the magic loop one. So as I'm knitting, we're knitting in this direction and the right side is facing me. That means that the floats are on the inside. Okay, so that's a little exaggerated, but what you do notice is that the circumference of the float line is smaller than the circumference of the stitches themselves that are on the needle. And that's going to be a common thread in all of these cases. So for uh, two circs, it's nearly the same situation as it is for uh, the magic loop with, with the DPNs. Also, your floats are on the inside maybe not as extreme of a situation as up here. And then with the single circular needle, they're also running around the inside. So that's one of the factors that contributes to the tightness. The other factor is what happens when you finish knitting along here and then you turn to change to go this direction on the other needle. What can happen is that the floats Say, say your last two stitches 
on each of these needles. Say this one's color A and this one's color B and this one's color B and this one's color A. So as you turn, now you're, you just used color A yarn here, you're not using it again till here. There is this tendency for the yarn behind the work to cut the corner kind of widely like that as it goes from this needle to this needle. And that is also a contributor to the stitches being tighter than what you want. So this same situation can happen here and then again on this side and here and here as well. Not so much in this example because you don't really ever have a needle change. And it can happen four times in this example, although not quite as extremely as it does here. So what's the solution? Uh, it's to turn the work inside out. And that sounds like it's gonna be crazy complicated, but it's really not. So I'm going to show you what turning it inside out looks like. It doesn't mean that you're purling instead of knitting. That's what the immediate thing that a lot of people think. It's, it's really not any harder. So here's the normal sort of setup where the right side is facing and we are working this way across the stitches. If you turn the work inside out, now the wrong side is facing you and you're going to still work on the right side with the right side facing you but you're going to be working on the back needle. So you're going to be going this way instead. Same knitting, same patterns, you don't do anything different, but you just, instead of going across the front needle, you work across the back needle and you carry your floats around the outside. So if we wanna look at this on a diagram similar to what we had before, now you can see for this example, instead of working our way across here, we are now working our way around the back. The right side is on the inside, so that means that our floats are going to be on the outside. And in particular, when we change needles at these intersections, the floats are going to carry around the outside. So now this float line is slightly larger than the actual row of stitches on the needles. So same thing for this example. And again, and then with this one as well. So it solves two problems. Our stitches, our circumference of our floats is now slightly bigger than the circumference of the stitches on the needle, and we've avoided any of those situations where the yarn tails cut the corners on the inside at the point where we were changing needles. I'm going to show you just a little bit of the knitting doing this, just to kind of help further get this to make sense. So here's my sock, I've now turned it inside out. Before we were going this way across the front, but now we're gonna go this way across the back. So, going to work that way. And the tails are now going to be on the outside, not the inside. So they're gonna wrap around this edge and not cut any corners. And so we just start our color work this way and work across the inside. All right, and that's all there is to it.